Hey guys, welcome to another video. Recently we checked out the NVIDIA GTX 960 for Windows XP Retro Gaming and officially it is the final GeForce with official drivers from NVIDIA. But a lot of you wrote in the comments that you can patch these drivers to, yeah, add support for more graphics cards. You see the GTX 960 is from the Maxwell generation and there are some faster cards like the GTX 970, the 980, the 980 Ti and the Titan X. But there are also some Maxwell based Nvidia workstation cards, these are called Quadro. And here we have the Quadro M6000. This is a really interesting video card. It is the workstation equivalent of the Titan X has 12 gigabytes of VRAM and it is compatible with Windows XP, Windows Vista and Windows 7. So this could become a really interesting video card. Modifying the drivers is not that difficult. We're using version 368.81 and then we need to edit the nv4 underscore dispi.inf file and modify two entries. We are basically modifying the drivers so during the installation it will detect these video cards as supported. To make your life easy I will put download links in the video description. You can download the patched driver and I will also give instructions if you want to patch a different driver version yourself. So we have the patched drivers, we've got the graphics card and now we need to put together a Windows XP system. I'm going with something fairly modern. It is the Intel Core i7-3770 on a Asus motherboard. It is the P8H77ME. We have four gigabytes of RAM, two two gigabyte memory modules. They have an XMP profile and they run at 1600 megahertz. It's a fairly nice board. We have PCI Express 16X, 4X and 1X as well as a PCI slot and two SATA 3 ports as well as four SATA 2 ports. At the back we have PS2, four USB 2, two USB 3, VGA, DVI and HDMI out as well as gigabit ethernet and audio ports. One highlight for Windows XP Retro Gaming is EAX sound, especially when you're playing with headphones or you have a surround system. So we're using the Soundblaster X5, this is the titanium for PCI Express. SSD is the way to go, even for Windows XP Retro Gaming, we're using a crucial MX500 with 500 gigabytes. Thank you to Michael, he donated the IODD ST400 device to the channel. It's a really nifty device, it's a USB uh, optical disc emulator and floppy emulator. So you put in a 2.5 inch SATA drive and load some ISO files and uh, floppy image files and then plug it in and it simulates a USB optical drive, making installing Windows XP really easy. In the BIOS, I'm loading the BIOS defaults and I make sure the XMP profile for the memory is loaded. And then I disable two cores. There's no need for having four cores under Windows XP. And I'm also turning off hyper-threading. As for drivers, we just need the Intel chipset drivers. And then I'm installing the patched NVIDIA drivers without any issues. And you can see here the desktop at full HD without any problems. And we also need the drivers for the Sound Blaster. First, I wanted to see how much better the Quadro M6000 is compared to the GDX 960. So we are testing in the game Fear because it's one of the most demanding Windows XP era games. And it also shows minimum average as well as maximum frame rates. So at 1080p with no anti-aliasing and no soft shadows, we're not seeing much of a difference. The Quadro is a little bit faster, but this is not something you will notice in games. In the game, we can adjust anti-aliasing, setting it to 4x, we can now see a larger difference. For example, the average FPS 351 compared to 220 on the GDX 960, and also the maximum FPS is significantly higher. To enable 8x anti-aliasing, we have to do it through the driver. There is no option to do this in the game, and here, the lead of the Quadro M6000, which is the equivalent, the workstation equivalent to the Titan X. Now the difference is much, much greater. Average 291 compared to 138. 
and on the GDX 960 you can see the minimum FPS going quite low to 68 in yeah this demanding game. So 1080p is not that demanding so I hooked it up to a 4k monitor with DisplayPort. I ran into a few issues. Firstly 1440p worked without any dramas but testing at 4k at 60 hertz at least the screen just blanks out and I think that's just a driver issue. However I was able to get a signal at 4k with 30 hertz. Now it's that's not playable it's not very smooth but it at least allowed me to run some benchmarks. We're now only testing the Quadro M6000. Here we have the game running at 1440p and we're comparing running it without anti-aliasing and with 4x AA and we can see the performance is still magnificent on the Quadro M6000 even at 1440p with anti-aliasing. What about 4K? Look at that. Even with 4x anti-aliasing the Quadro M6000 runs the game really well. It's a shame that we can only get 30 hertz display output. If you know a workaround, I would be really interested to hearing about that. So the performance is outstanding. I then had a look into the driver options of the Nvidia Quadro just to see if there's anything interesting. And yeah, there's a significant difference in the driver when it comes to anti-aliasing and that is super sampling support. So I will put a screenshot on the screen and we can see uh, there's an interesting 16x anti-aliasing anti option which uses 4x super sampling as well as 4x multi sampling for a really beautiful image. I'm actually thinking of doing a future video showing you the differences with all these anti-aliasing options. So guys with the help of some patched drivers the Nvidia Titan X or the Quadro M6000 are indeed the fastest video cards from Nvidia that you can use in a Windows XP retro gaming PC. Is this performance necessary? Well that's really debatable and depends on the game. Uh, at 1440p at least yeah it's nice to have that performance especially if you're playing games like uh, Fear that can be a bit more demanding. Are these uh, end of the era video cards the best option? Well that also depends. Um, I haven't run into any issues but there could be some games that are more compatible on older video cards with older drivers. So you could run into an issue where some games just don't work properly on these new video cards with these late drivers. The Quadro offering super sampling anti-aliasing is also a nice feature and there are other versions of the Quadro like the M4000, the M2000. These are like the equivalent to the GDX 950 and other cards. So uh, is there a way to enable super sampling anti-aliasing on the GeForce? I'm not sure. I don't want to say no there isn't because as I found out in, one, in many instances there's always a way. You guys always have some uh, hack or some option to modify drivers. So I would be very interested in learning can you enable the equivalent anti-aliasing modes that we saw on the Quadro. Can you enable them on a GeForce. As for using a fairly modern i7 for Windows XP retro gaming. Some of you might feel like well that's better than what you have at home. And I do understand that. Um, in my area older vintage retro parts cost actually more than uh, something like this and it doesn't have to be the latest generation i7. You can push the uh, boundaries a little bit further. You can go with Haswell. The top CPU is the i7. It's the 4790K I believe and even on a non overclocking motherboard I think you can run it at 4.4 gigahertz. So that would be uh, optimal to get the highest FPS. The only difference you're going to notice with these fast mainboards is that the uh, FPS is just capped a little bit lower but in terms of average FPS or running I don't know 144 Hz monitor enabling VSync to get perfect frame pacing all of these mainboards and CPUs will do a fantastic job. As for the sound the game we tested today Fear is a really good game to check out EAX. Get some headphones play it late night you will get a fantastic experience. Here we have another high performance Windows XP card. This is the GDX 950 and let's talk about pricing. So something like the Titan X or the Quadro M6000 they're not going to be cheap. 
I was really lucky. I ended up getting the video card through a uh, HP workstation, a uh, Z640, which I got through Osbargen for a fairly decent price. And I really bought it just because it had the video card in there. I think these sorts of video cards will be really interesting in the future for the retro PC gaming community because you can build a machine that can run XP, Vista and Windows 7. These operating systems are more compatible than Windows 11. The Maxwell generation of video cards are still fairly usable to this day. Uh, I tested the Quadro M6000 in a few modern games and it actually does really well, especially the 12 gigabytes of VRAM makes it relevant even with modern games. So prices for used GDX 950s and 960s are still on the high side because people use them for modern gaming. That means you might have to look uh, a little bit uh, further back in the past. Something like a 750 or 750 Ti is a good choice. And if the prices are still too high for these video cards, yeah, 600, 500, 400, lots of options in terms of Windows XP retro gaming. I will put some affiliate links down below in the video description, including some games from GOG. Uh, that's what this is all about. Having fun with old computers, playing some classic games that you can pick up for cheap, that are fully patched, well documented, and yeah, in my opinion, a lot of these old games are much better than what we get these days. And that's it guys for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave your comments down below. Have you had any experience with patching drivers and using one of these high-end video cards under Windows XP? And did you have any success getting 4K60 to work on a GeForce? And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.